Uh, welcome back. Uh, we are 42 days away from Election Day, and the polls show a tight race between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Take a look at the latest NBC News poll showing Harris up 49 percent to Trump's 44 percent nationally. Still within the margin of error, but voters list their top issues as inflation, immigration, and the economy. They trust Trump more on those issues. Voters also favor Trump on securing the border and controlling immigration, 54 percent to Harris's 33 percent. And on dealing with the economy, voters trust Trump 50 percent to Harris's 41 percent. The polls coming on the heels of Trump saying that it's too late for another debate after Harris agreed to a face-off on CNN. Harris, meanwhile, is snubbing tradition and says she will not attend the Al Smith dinner on October 17th. She says instead she wants to campaign as one of her allies claims she's just too busy to attend. Joining me now is the Heritage Foundation and Heritage Action President Kevin Roberts. Kevin, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. How would you assess the race so far? You know, it's been a steady state since this switcheroo that the Democrats pulled. Uh, I, I think that the race is obviously neck and neck. I think it's closer than what that recent NBC News poll shows. What we keep hearing from our pollsters, from other people, is that in the swing states, Mr. Trump has a persistent lead. So you got to offset that, even if the vice president has a narrow lead nationally against the, the former president, you have to offset that against what seems to be a pretty persistent lead by Trump and Vance in places like Pennsylvania. Arizona, Georgia, maybe even Michigan. All of that to say, Maria, I think the upshot about this race is that until and unless more people in the legacy media get the vice president and the governor of Minnesota to talk about their terrible policy records, you're going to see this race remain neck and neck. I have never seen anything like this in my entire career. Well, I mean, look, Kamala is expected to roll out new economic proposals this week, we're told. Reuters is reporting that Harris's new policies could be announced in Pittsburgh on Wednesday. She also said, I'm going to have a, uh, a, a policy uh, plan on Wednesday, she said the other day to reporters. And, and uh, Reuters says it aims to help Americans build wealth and set economic incentives for businesses to aid that goal, whatever that means. Some critics are now sounding the alarm after a major IRS union, uh, the National Treasury Employees Union, endorsed Harris. Conservative commentator Joey Manorino writes this on X, get ready to be taxed to death. So this is the union that is uh, supporting Kamala Harris. I guess they're expecting a huge amount of new business and lots of new jobs in the IRS. Is that right? Yeah, well, it is. I would uh, much rather everyday Americans like economic plans than whatever it is the IRS agents union says. And that really cuts to the chase. The issue set of this election, whether the, it's, it's the economy or the border, considering the vice president's terrible record on both, really does undermine, or the issue set actually favors Mr. Trump and Mr. Vance. But the policy record of the vice president has undermined the American dream for everyday Americans. And so if Trump and Vance do do what they've done over the last few weeks, which is have a zealous focus on that issue set, on Mr. Trump's record as, as in his first term, on the economy, on the fact that the vice president, of course, isn't just the border czar. Her legacy is the invasion czar. I think everyday Americans will realize that that, coupled with this ridiculous endorsement by the IRS agents union, tells us that the vice president is out of step. But that's going to require the vice president to actually do some interviews and talk more about policy substance. Yeah. Well, look, you're right. She's not doing any interviews. She's not talking about uh, any policy plans, and yet she's getting away with it. But I want to ask you about your pr uh, proposals, because Democrats continue to try to tie Trump to your foundation's Project 2025. Trump himself has distanced himself from this 2025. He denied any involvement in it. Here's President Trump during the debate on September 10th. Watch this. She knows better than anyone. I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad. But it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. Everybody knows I'm an open book. So, Kevin, I mean, the Heritage Foundation is behind this Project 2025. Where did you get these proposals? And are you suggesting Trump has anything to do with it or not? 
Oh, absolutely not. We've done this since 1980, as you know, with our first mandate for leadership. This is typical public policy organization work. And so we, we would never have any elected official part of it because of the lane that we occupy. It actually would be illegal for us to do that. So Mr. Trump's completely right and accurate in saying that. But the second point, I think, is even more telling, Maria. The vice president needs to answer questions about the involvement of the Center for American Progress, which is a radically leftist organization. She has several dozen people people in her administration from that organization, their ideas are very out of step with mainstream American values. When you poll the, the, the kinds of things that we're proposing at the Heritage Foundation, restoring law and order at the border, revitalizing the economy, all things that really help to restore the American dream, these are 80-20 issues. The underlying thing is particularly sinister, though, and I just want to hang on this point for a moment, and it is that the reason the vice president is attacking our works so much is not just to mischaracterize it, but very importantly, to censor free speech by those of us on the political right. We're not rolling over on this. We're going to continue to do what we've done for half a century. The institutional right, whether it's in D.C. or outside the nation's capital, is always going to be working on policies on behalf of hardworking Americans. Of, of, of course you are. But just to be clear, you had no involvement of <clears throat> President Trump. You did not speak to President Trump. You did not put his ideas in this Project 2025. Is that correct? President Trump and no elected official had anything to do with our work. We, we, we couldn't allow that to happen. This is okay. boilerplate conservative policy proposals. Thank it's, you. it's a menu of options, which is, which is what we do all the time. Yeah, this is an important conversation, Kevin, because you see what the Democrats are trying to do. Cheryl Sony, you've seen it. OK, we keep hearing this, that he's tied to 2025. He has to keep coming back and play defense, saying, I have nothing to do with it. Kamala Harris just tweeted, Kevin, uh, six minutes ago, and it's all about Project 2025. And his and they say it's Donald Trump's Project 2025 agenda. It would effectively ban IVF. How do you fight back the misinformation? I mean, I realize that it's not, you're, you're not working for the Trump campaign, but this is misinformation about heritage. How do you go back against this machine, as you rightly point out, these left-leading groups? Groups in Washington are filled with former Obama officials in particular, and they're the ones that are pushing all of this out, and they are soiling the name of heritage. That, well, they're, they're attempting to do that. Two things, though. The first is you go to project2025.org, and you can see how mischaracterized the, the left has made this project. We've had several dozen fact checks by liberal media outlets about the extent of the lies. But the second thing is, which is some hopefulness about all of this, is all of their attacks have driven people to learn more about these policy proposals. And what we hear, because these policy proposals are very popular, is that people are very interested in having a policy conversation. And so our work will persist. It's, it's done not for the establishment in D.C., but for everyday Americans. And we remain very hopeful, not just at Heritage, but across the United States, that given the level of mischaracterization by the left about this, that people are realizing the reason they're doing this is because they can't run on their policy record. And I mm -hmm. think that we're over the target when it comes to those policies. All right, Kevin, good to have you on the program. Thank you so much, Kevin Roberts. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching Mornings with Maria.